three more wrestlers have qualified for the Elimination Chamber. Bobby Lashley and LA Knight won matches to advance to the men's Elimination Chamber match on Monday Night Raw, while Liv Morgan advanced to the women's Chamber match ahead of the February 24th Premium Live event in Perth, Australia. Bobby Lashley was the first to qualify, defeating Bronson Reed. Liv Morgan made her Raw in-ring return by defeating Zoe Stark. LA Knight followed up with a victory over Ivar. Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton qualified on SmackDown Friday to enter the men's chamber. Becky Lynch qualified on last week's Raw, while Bianca Belair qualified on SmackDown. The winner of the men's chamber will square off against World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins at WrestleMania 40, while the women's chamber winner will face Women's World Champion Rhea Ripley. More qualifying matches will be taking place on SmackDown. Additionally, Cody Rhodes vs. Drew McIntyre is one of the several matches announced for WWE Raw on Monday, February 19th. Rhodes vs. McIntyre was announced for next week during Raw, and the episode closed with Rhodes laying out Drew with a Cody Cutter and coming to the aid of Sami Zayn as Drew McIntyre attacked. Stone Cold Steve Austin isn't closing the door on competing in the ring again. Austin came out of retirement at WrestleMania 38 in 2022, wrestling his first match in nearly two decades. He defeated Kevin Owens in a no-holds-barred match that wasn't officially announced in advance. It was instead advertised as a KO segment with Owens and Austin. In an interview with ESPN to promote WWE 2K24, the 59-year-old Austin didn't rule out the possibility of having another match. Austin told ESPN if he does wrestle again, he has an opponent in mind who he would like to face. Austin did not name who that opponent is. ESPN wrote, when asked about whether he had an idea of what opponent he would want in what would likely be considered his final career match, Austin said he did but he did not want to mention the name because he was not promoting the match, nor did he want to add pressure on WWE or the foe to make it happen. When asked about potentially facing CM Punk, Austin said that matchup would be a good one, saying, I like Punk and I think Punk likes me, so as long as he can take a Stone Cold Stunner, I consider him a great friend, a great guy, and a great wrestler who's had a great career. We'll see. CM Punk returned to WWE at Survivor Series last November and was scheduled to challenge World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins at WrestleMania 40. But CM Punk will instead be out of action for several months after suffering a torn triceps in the Royal Rumble. CM Punk underwent surgery for the injury earlier this month. And speaking Speaking of this matchup that was supposed to happen at WrestleMania 40, I asked Seth Rollins how he felt that that match with CM Punk was not going to happen, and here's what he had to say. I mean, look, one of us is a fragile old man, and one of us is a, uh, a young stallion. So I'll be back in a couple weeks. He'll be back in a year or two till his next injury. I don't know. Um, I'd love to kick the crap out of him. I'm sure he'd love to get in there and try to do something to me, but um, it, it's not going to work. Um, so it, I, am I disappointed? I'd say a little bit, only because I really thought if we had an opportunity to do it, stomping his head into the mat would be the best at WrestleMania. Like, would be the best at WrestleMania in front of the biggest audience. So, a little bummed by that, but I, I, I feel like he's talking about the greatest comeback of all time. I will, uh, I'll be happy to stomp out that comeback when the time comes. Moving on, Kazuchika Okada may have already made up his mind between AEW and WWE. Fightful Select reported on Sunday that Okada is expected to sign with AEW following his departure from New Japan Pro Wrestling later this month. According to the reports, the deal between Okada and AEW was effectively agreed to in the last couple of weeks, but Fightful has not confirmed that the contract has been signed. Fightful also said AEW has been confident that they would sign Okada for the last several weeks, and creative ideas for him had been tossed around back in January. On Sunday, Okada Okada defeated Hiroshi Tanahashi at New Japan Pro Wrestling's New Beginning event in Osaka. He is expected to finish with the company following matches on February 23rd and 24th. AEW has had a lot of big news recently. On last week's episode of AEW Dynamite, Tony Khan announced a special big business episode of Dynamite for Boston, with the show expected to feature the AEW debut of Mercedes Monet. In the big business graphic shown on air, a Boston sign appears on the garden and likely a reference to Monet's legit boss moniker from her WWE days. The big business tease is similar to the tack taken when AEW debuted CM Punk at Rampage The First Dance in August 2021, where Punk was not mentioned by name, 
but his debut was expected. In a report posted Wednesday night, Fightful Select states that Mercedes is under contract to AEW and has been since at least last month, and that New Japan hopes to continue working with her even if she is with AEW and has discussed that with the promotion. I spoke with Tony Khan and this is what he had to say about the big business announcement. Well, I'm excited to come to Boston and have a great show. I think Boston is not only one of the best cities for AEW going back to the very first weeks of Dynamite. We did our second show ever there, but this show will be second to none. AEW Big Business is going to be a great show and I'm really excited about it. I think everybody's reading and interpreting what they think is going to come and I think that's awesome. You want to build the speculation for Wednesday, March 13th, AEW Big Business. The pre-sale started today and we're off to a huge start. This is going to be a very successful event and I can't wait to come to Boston and keep this great run, keep this momentum going. I mean, it's it's been awesome just this past week. Uh, I thought Collision on Saturday, one of our best shows, and Collision's been on this amazing run of shows week in, week out. This past week was another great one. I mean, I, I thought it was going to be really challenging coming off the great cage match we had, the trios elimination steel cage. That was an amazing show. And then another great one last week on Saturday. And we've done now 227 episodes of Wednesday Night Dynamite. And to have 227 episodes and maybe the best one ever, uh, and I don't know how uh, that was even possible to have. Additionally, last week, there was a major announcement that ESPN, Fox, and Warner Brothers Discovery would join together to create a joint all-in-one streaming service that will provide sports content from all major pro sports leagues. Of course, I asked Tony Khan what this could potentially mean for AEW. Here's what he had to say. Really exciting timing. AEW, we do not have a streaming platform that we are with domestically right now. I think it's something the wrestling fans have been calling for. We have the library, we have the content, but we also produce great new content, including the great pay-per-view events we do that are streaming pay-per-views right now. I think there's a ton of opportunity in the market and clearly demand for it. And seeing what's happening in the industry right now, people have seen other big streaming deals happening in wrestling. And I think in particular for AEW, the stage is set for us to have a great media rights year. And by the end of the year, we'll know the home for AEW going forward. Right now we have great, great thing going with every Wednesday night on TBS, every Friday and Saturday on TNT, both. I love that, that's great. We have a great opportunity to find out where Dynamite, Rampage, and Collision are gonna live going forward, as well as the streaming service. And it's exciting things happening for us right now. You know, our ratings domestically, internationally, some pretty cool milestones. Uh, you see AEW very competitive on Wednesday nights with the NBA, and it's three out of four weeks that we beat the NBA on ESPN straight up on Wednesday night Dynamite. That's pretty cool. And the shows have been great. I think that's only going to continue to build an audience now. Recent run of shows has been some of our best stuff uh, on, on Wednesdays, but also on Saturdays. Uh, Collision, like I said, has been really strong. What we did this week, I saw the numbers, you know, for the show before us, we brought in about nine times more viewers than the show previous. So that's pretty good to, to go uh, 9x your lead in in this business. That's a very good thing. So I was very proud of that. And, and uh, I think a lot of good things happening. And excited for Rampage tonight with some of our biggest stars uh, and some great international wrestling tonight on Rampage. And just a great time for the company going into revolution. And you mentioned big business, which is looming. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. As always, make sure to subscribe to F4W Online for more videos just like this one and plenty more pro wrestling coverage.